Well, next up on the podcast, a guy we've been wanting to talk to for quite a long time. And, you know, we want to do a look at Shiawassee County, the Argus Crest readership area, a look at what's in store this coming fall in football. And why not get the man, the myth himself, Jerome Murphy from the Argus Press, join us. Jerome, first of all, thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here. You know, um, I know we talked about getting me on here for a few months so yeah, yeah. And, and you finally made an appearance and yeah, you know yeah, we want to talk yeah. a little bit about your career but first of all let's let's talk about some of the teams some of the players we want to watch here in Shiawassee County where would you start well I would probably start at Corona myself because uh the two Bauer twins are two of the players that sort of stand out to me um they're both really impact players and uh um, this this will be their senior season, and they're going to be going to Saginaw Valley, I believe. Uh, I think they've signed their well, – they haven't really signed anything yet, but the verbal – Yeah, verbal commitment, commitment right yeah. at the moment. And uh, Wyatt I, – obviously, they're identical twins. <laughs> right. And uh, Wyatt plays quarterback, and Tarek plays wide receiver. And they – Wyatt had an outstanding season last year, right? I think 19 touchdowns, one, one interception. Yeah, one interception. And he ran for over a thousand yards. He passed for over a thousand, and he rushed for over a thousand. And uh, they had quite a season. What eight, eight and three, I believe. Yeah, I and mean, they're looking to make a deep, deep run this season as well. You know, we know Corona is going to be good, especially if they stay healthy. Uh, you know, Jay Nettington's a stud at, at running back, and they're loaded in the skill positions. You know, the, the big key, and we've talked about it before. Jared, you can attest to it being a former quarterback, and Matt, you played ball as a wide receiver. That line, offensive and defensive line, is very important. Offensive and defensive line, and then, like we've said before, just kind of getting lucky and staying healthy. I think that's a big thing. Like you said, everything is there, talent, experience, coaching, all of that is there. Now you just got to hope you can stay healthy and be prepared and let the rest kind of play out for itself. So the Cavaliers have everything right there. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the It's going to be a fun year in the county for sure. Corona. Uh, hey, Jerome, I got a quick question for you kind of as we've yeah, gone yeah. through the years. Uh-huh. Do you do you ever miss the old MMB uh, conference? Is that something you wish would come <laughs> back around? Uh, yes, I do miss it. They had a lot. They had a lot of characters. You know, some of the coaches there. Um, and it goes back to when I was just a young young kid, uh, justening over at LC. Uh, it was some of the Corona. You know. Um, mm-hmm. um, I just miss that a lot. But uh, that's where it all started. You know as far as what I'm, I'm concerned, but uh, oh, yeah. some pretty great rivalries there for sure. And speaking yeah. of that, that that's probably back in the day. I was going to ask you Murph. Uh, I remember growing up and playing turf. The Murph was <laughs> something that I looked forward to. I mean, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. I look forward to that every weekend. I would pull that Argus press open. I would probably look at the, the Owasso cinemas, see what movies were playing. <laughs> and then I would fill out my turf, the Murph. And of course I'd always pick Corona to win. I would always yeah, pick I gave away. Yep, I just I gave away pick. hundreds and hundreds of movie passes, <laughs> and uh, I literally put that. I kept that place in business, you know. I <laughs> I enjoyed doing that, and we've had many in, incarnations of that contest, and we'll still have that this year again. It's just big skin picks. Yeah, but uh, I've won that a couple of times. I haven't been the greatest picker in the world, but I've had some fun with it, you know. Question is, Matt, did you did you go to the movies a lot, Matt? We went Argus? to the movies a lot. I mean, that was just something you did as a kid growing up in Owasso, Corona. You know, Friday night, Saturday night, if you weren't going to a football game or a basketball game, you were going to the movies or going roller skating. But I rarely got to the free passes because <laughs> I was one that every week it was Corona, Michigan, and the Lions, and not picking Michigan State. Those four are, were always happening, so I didn't win very much. I was going to ask you, Murph, though, kind of along those lines – uh, how cool is it for you to kind of reflect back on your career and think about, I mean, you, you did cover some of my playing days, Jared's playing days, not Ted's Ted, Ted was no. a little before you, a little before your time, but kind of reflecting on your career and all the, the, the communities and all the good players and teams and all that kind of stuff that you've covered over however many years you've been doing it. It just seems a little bit odd because uh, it doesn't seem like I've been doing it for 34 years, you know. And uh, before that, I worked at the Independent for maybe, yeah, two, three years uh, part-time. 
and then I went to Richmond, Michigan, and I was the sports editor there for three years. And then I finally came back. I got a call from Gary Webster. They, he said that the uh, sports writer that they hired only lasted a couple of weeks. So I, he told me to come down back home again, and I was it, it didn't take me too long to get here. So I, I've always been an Owasso native, and I enjoyed coming back and uh, – working with Gary Webster and Tony Hornis and uh like I say 34 years that's uh that's a lot of years and a lot of teams and a lot of players and that's one of the things I enjoyed about it is working with the players and the coaches and uh we've had a few state champions um not too many in bas- boys basketball but we've had some in girls basketball and uh um you know, football. track and field and uh, football. With football. Yep, Chesning won a couple of years, what, 80, 1998 and 2001. 2001 uh, New Lothrop won a couple of times. Um, so those are probably some of them big highlights. And, of course, the Wasso winning the softball ch- state championship in 2021. And, uh, and, uh, I'm looking forward to the last uh, football season coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what's been your favorite part of the your job over over the years, Drew? What what is it that keeps you coming back? That's a good question. You know, I I just enjoy being around sports and being around the athletes, uh, and uh, I enjoy writing, uh, but. Uh, I don't really particularly like the deadlines too much, and the weekends <laughs> are pretty much. Uh, taken up so uh, yeah. i think i i'm ready for a change anyway but i enjoy photography a lot and uh, it's uh it's been a it's been a fun run you know uh i can't i can't complain about anything really so. you know if, if you talked about some of the state championships and some of the, some of those highlights what about personally do you have a, a favorite you know game or column that you wrote anything that really stands out at the top for for you I can't really name one particular thing. Um, I just, I'm just thinking about the state titles and football. Um, Jim Zapp and, um, and Ryan, I think Ryan Brady was the guy who engineered the first one in 1998, right? 100%. Wild 41 38 shootout with Belding. I mean, that was one yeah, of the greatest yeah, games yeah. in high school history, I think, in, in the finals. Yep. Yeah, and I remember the first Owasso Corona game. <laughs> And I think it was at Corona. It was at Corona, right? It was so, at Corona. Ten points up, a minute and a half to go. Don't get me down that road again. The funny thing was, <laughs> I left the game early because I, I. Oh no! <laughs> Deadline I, time. I, I thought Corona had this game won, you know, and then they did too. It was maybe what a minute and a half left. Minute and a half left. Like I said, Corona's up ten. Uh, Owasso scores, kicks an onside kick. Corona recovers it, but there was a penalty. <laughs> got to kick it again. They recovered the onside kick, scored the winning touchdown. I don't know, like 30 seconds to go, 20 seconds to go. I mean, it was huge. And you talked about leaving. You know, it's, I've always talked about this. I can't tell you how many people did exactly what you did and listened to the final call on the radio on Z92.5. And and uh, just goes to show you, better not leave too early, especially when those teams are involved. That's right. And I can remember... Well, the first time I heard about the outcome was when Tom Harkman called me with the stats for the game, and he said, "Okay, <laughs> did we you won play the dumb? game." Did you play dumb, and said, "Yeah, hey, okay, just give it to me." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, I, it was a lesson well learned. You know, never leave early for anything. You know, yeah. until the final gun. Yeah. So, um, there's been, I guess, there hasn't really been any one specific game or column that stands out, but I. Just uh, enjoyed, just enjoyed the run, I guess. So, yeah. Yep. Any but, other teams that we should be keeping an eye on? I know, obviously, Corona is the one in the in Mid Michigan and Shiawassee County area. Any other teams that you're kind of keeping an eye on this fall? Yeah, New Lothrop definitely. Um, yeah. They didn't win the MMAC last year. Durand won it, and they it was sort of like a banner year for Durand. Uh, it seemed like they had so many seniors led by Gabe Lynn, but New Lothrop still went to the state semifinals, right? Uh, uh, they ended up losing to, is it Traverse City, St. Francis? 
Yeah, yeah. that was a heck of a team too. And I was <laughs> I was shocked they didn't win the state championship. Yeah, um, that was one of the colder games I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> Jared can relate. Yeah, it, it was snowing outside, and I was just uh, worried about keeping my camera intact, you know. But um, they're going to be good because uh, Jack Kohanek, the quarterback, is back along with some other guys, and he's another guy to look out for uh, besides the Bauer brothers. Um, so. Well, you know, Ovid Elsie, too. I mean, Ovid Elsie beat Corona last year in that final game of the regular season. Their quarterback is back. Excellent athlete, Trice Tokar. I know before we started recording here on Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, uh, thanks for coming in that early, by the way. Uh, Ovid Elsie, young team, you said, but they do have their quarterback back, and he's excellent. Oh, he's excellent. Uh, uh, pole vault champion, and he's like an, an elusive quarterback. Uh and he also plays safety. Uh, he's definitely going to be another guy to watch out for. How about, how about Owasso? Rob, Ron Tyner back, I think it's his second year. You know, it looks like they're, again, a young team. Hoyt Patrick did some quarterbacking last year, but his younger brother, sophomore, uh, Liam, is going to be the QB at least to start the season. Is it a lot of question marks, you think, on the Trojans? A lot of question marks. Uh, I would like to see them um, take a, a step up this year. Um and I think they might. I'm not sure if they're going to be having the same helmets or not. The Michigan. Ah. We'll see what happens. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, there. Another question mark too is uh, Byron football team going to eight man, and I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm going to talk to the coach today about the team. So, and again, before we get you out of here, Jerome, I know you guys have a, a big. Uh, preview publication that's coming out. Tell us a little bit about when that will hit the stands and uh, some of the things you're working on. Well, I know it's going to be hitting the stands next week. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be, I talked to the, the Bauer brothers. It's going to be the cover story and uh, looking forward to um, this is my final season again, man. We're, we're going to have the pick skin picks again. So we'll see how that happens. But uh We've had some changes at the Argus, but uh, yeah. we got a new editor, Aaron Bodist, um, and uh, looking forward to that. So, all right, guys, any other questions before we let the Murph escape? No, just uh, yeah, I, I know you've you've done an awesome job covering athletes in the area, and we always talk about it that we we love doing this show and what Ted did for his whole career, giving some athletes a little bit of shine, whether it's on the radio or a podcast or, you know, seeing their, seeing their names in the newspaper. I, I did, I was, I was lucky enough to make a couple um, articles and have my picture in the Argus press a couple times. I know how cool that was for me. So I know everyone in the area definitely appreciates everything you did. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. I, I just enjoyed uh, working with the kids, uh, the great, great kids uh, and the coaches. So yeah, I've, I've had some, uh, um uh, memorable coaching um encounters so okay all right murph we appreciate it uh you know we will continue on with our prep pigskin preview right after this <laughs> <laughs>